Welcome back. In recent times, drones have transformed from being just a mundane tool to a full cultural sensation. An example is the agricultural sector where drones are applied through the use of advanced sensors and digital imaging capabilities to enable farmers gather a richer picture of their fields. In Nigeria, a drone startup company is trying to provide drone services to farmers in the area of harvest. We have a drone expert, Odionye Confident, who's here with us to tell us more about how this works. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. So how does a drone service help farmers to improve their harvest? Well, if we look at um, the process of farming, uh, most of the important process of the operation of, of a farmer on his farmland is um, the spraying of herbicides to kill the weeds in order to enable the plant to die or pests in terms of in, in occasions where there are pest attacks. And we find out that the operation of the handheld spraying devices is not efficient because a typical example is that it takes two people, 24 hours, to spray one hectare. And one hectare is the size of a football field. And despite the whole day being wasted, there's still human errors, fatigue, and the weeds are still there. So at the tail point of the harvest period, you find out that these farmers are still not harvesting 100%. Most of them die due to the ineffective um, way of spraying. And also, the last segment is also the inspection of the crop to detect if the crops are healthy or if they are not. So it's a whole lot of man hours involved for humans to go crop by crop to inspect each and every of these crops. So removing this ineffective way of of farming, we are now bringing in the drone technology in the day-to-day -day activities. The drones can spray a hundred hectares of land within 10 to 12 hours. That one hectare of land that takes um, two individuals 24 hours takes the drone 10 to 15 minutes. And the accuracy is top-notch because no single crop or landmass area will be left out of the spraying. So we found out that we are creating more and more effectiveness to the operation of a farmer, reducing his cost drastically. So, for example, it, the farmer pays an individual 5,000 naira to spray per hectare, but we charge 3,000 naira. That is close to half of the usual cost, and yet we still do this with a whole lot more precision. So, down towards the harvest period, we find out that the, the farmers are, in, uh, are able to invest 100% of their crops because their crops aren't dying anymore, the weeds are, not, are no longer attacking the, the crops, the pests no longer have the power to eat a whole um, um, a lot of uh, um, landmass in their farmland. And then the inspection is also top-notch because we enable these guys to have real-time information of the crop health and the immediate um, 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 uh, medications to apply to them. Now, talking about cost, because you mentioned cost earlier, yeah. how affordable is the use of this drone technology compared to doing it manually? Yeah, so we found out that the drone technology themselves, they are expensive for a farmer to uh, take out $15,000 to $20,000 to buy one equipment. So what we do is this, we acquire this drone ourselves and we provide it for, as a service to these farmers. So the farmers pay us $3,000 per hectare to spray um, their farm. So a farmer that has a hundred hectares of land, we find that he's spending about 300,000 naira to spray per month, as opposed to the weekly spraying of humans, that you pay 5,000 naira per individual. Okay, but that, let us talk about the ethical and the social implications when dealing with agricultural drones. How do you balance this, looking at places like Nigeria, where you have to get authorization to fly a drone? Yeah, well, all countries, let me say most countries require you have authorization from the civil aviation to fly the drone. So it's not new and it's the right step because if the NCA does not create a regulation, there will be no investors because the investors will be like, okay, this is an uncharted water. We don't, we don't know what these guys have in mind. They could just say, okay, fine, we don't want drones in our country. So, but the NCA taking up the first step to say, hey guys, before you fly a drone, you have to Register, you have to get a license, a certification, a, a remote pilot certification. Very nice, very lovely. Investors were happy and they came in and they're they, they bringing their funds to grow this industry. So I believe it's a, it's, a, it's a step in the right direction. And in terms of the ethical um, angle of it, uh, most people do say that the drone technology is replacing jobs in the farmland. That's not true. The, the truth is that from the beginning of clearing of the land, human efforts are being applied. Planting the seeds, human efforts are being applied. And it's effective, but the spraying and the inspection is not effective because we get tired, we have human errors. So these two most critical parts of the operation of the farmland can be operated by robots, drones. And replacing them does not mean that those people who, who plant seed will no longer come to the farmland to plant seed, no. 
doesn't mean that those people who harvest the farmland don't want to come to harvest the farmland. No. So you still have the same workforce coming to harvest the farmland and plant the seed and clear the land. But the areas where their workforce is, is inefficient, we have to make sure it works because the goal is this. In order for us to attain food security, for us to attain food security, they have to have a 100%. We are an import dependent country on food. If, for example, Nigeria should be attacked by an external nation, they'll first of all block your food supply. So, why can't we be able to create our local food security in order to grow our economy and also our, ourselves? Well, you've talked so much about you know, the advantages of using the drone services, but apart from uh, uh, using it to improve, improve harvest and collecting data, what else can we expect from the drone services in the future? Well, um, the drone services work in diverse sectors. We, the drone services works with the oil and gas sector, enables them to carry out flare stack um, um, readings, enables them to also look for oil pipeline leakage and also um, 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 intruders to um, the oil pipelines. The drones also work in the mining sector and a whole lot more. But we look at the drone working so much more in the logistics sector in terms of delivering goods from one place to another, making it better and easier for us as humans to assess our products. Because in, uh, we know that Amazon and Google are still having a pilot stage of testing drone to home delivery. But for Nigeria, we have to go back a bit. We're not going to get to drone to home delivery within the next five to ten years. No, but we can get to drone to a local government delivery. So imagine you want to deliver a product from the mainland to where you don't have to use your bike or car. The drone can take it closer while the bike takes it down to your home. Well, many thanks, drone experts, or join your confidence for talking to us on Network Africa. It's a pleasure. And that's our program today. Thank you for watching. I am Bissi Adebayo.